Well, watching that with us was the chair of Save British Farming, Liz Webster, who joins me now. Uh, thanks for being with us, uh, Liz. Uh, clearly a really tough time for farmers. What are your colleagues telling you who've been caught up in these floods? Well, um, you know, it's, it's just another blow for farming. It's been one thing after another with a government just that just has really no interest in food production or there is no food plan. And they just try and pacify us with uh, one little trick after another. Um, but ultimately, we are going into serious times with the EU import checks coming um, in because we're more reliant on imports than ever. And food is shrinking thanks to changes with Brexit but also, as you can see, the climate is ensuring that what food we were growing is now um, rotten. The government says, of course, that it uh, has uh, put a huge amount of money into flood prevention. Uh, the Environment Agency uh, 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 has, uh, you know, a lot of money at its disposal. Why isn't it being spent in the right way, do you think? Well, I mean, you know, it's, these amounts of money sound huge, but really nothing is really being properly joined up. Um, and, you know, around here, we're quite used to flooding. We're at the, the source of the Thames and we're quite low lying. But they've known that climate change is here and there's really been nothing done. The rivers are not dredged any longer. The gates down in Lechlade from us are held closed. So the water banks up up here and you've got more and more housing being built with less thought around how the water, where the water is going to go. And, you know, guess what? There's only so much that can be held. And that's why you're seeing flooding in Oxford now, because we've, we've been saturated up here since October. Um, and no one comes out here and does anything or, or changes anything whatsoever. So I don't know where the money's going, to be honest with you. Is part of the problem uh, ageing drainage systems, do you think, in, in rural Britain? Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, the sewage situation is a serious problem for us. Uh, you know, we've had our cattle getting sick um, at the end of the summer because of the sewage in the water. Um, and, uh, you know, goodness knows for swimmers or, or uh, you know, the public health risk of this. Um, we're all paying more for our water than ever before. And, and it, you know, we seem to be held to ransom by the water um, companies and nothing is being done. And, you know, this, this is a, it's, it's a catastrophe and it's affecting public health, food supply and, and our homes. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's like, you know, it's like something out of a dystopian nightmare, isn't it? We've heard uh, in the last hour or so from the government saying farmers who've suffered uninsurable damage to their land can apply for grants of up to £25,000. That's through the Farming Recovery Fund. I know you're saying your main issues are long term, but in the short term, that surely will be welcome. Any help is welcome, of course, but we've lost so much money since Brexit because of the removal of BPS. You know, it, it, it is... Uh, and with the, the increased input costs, you know, it, it is, there's two things. It's A, whether farming is a viable business, but, you know, for everybody in the country, it's about everybody's food. And nobody seems to understand that food comes from farms. It doesn't come from supermarkets. And the global situation with the two um, canals, Pan uh, Panama and Suez Canal, being in crisis, we, you know, we need to think carefully about where the food imports are coming from because British farmers are not producing enough food to feed the British people. And the government don't seem to be aware or care about this. Um, and we've been warning of this since the Ukraine invasion and with the Brexit changes. I have been asking the government, who's going to feed Britain? Because they're not, there's no food plan. And the only thing that the Agriculture Act really addresses is environmental schemes. And as you can see, the environmental schemes are not going brilliantly either. Um, and there is no joined up mm. thinking um, around these issues. And it's only when there's a crisis that suddenly they sort of go, oh, we should do something about this. But it's too late. Um, there should be some planning. Well, there should be some proper working with farmers instead of having 
gimmicky um, uh, get togethers in Downing Street with hay bales, which are meaningless. You know, we need a proper okay, plan. Well, it is. Um... Yeah, it is uh, an election year, Liz uh, Webster. It is an election year, so maybe we will uh, hear more uh, from uh, all parties uh, over the next few weeks and months, but we must leave it there. Thank you for your time. Liz Webster from Save British Farm. This is the kind of flooding that farms are having to deal with. The weather has been so extreme this year and we have had no support from the government. They have pulled the rug from under our feet by ensuring that uh, um, we're not getting the same amount of payments as we did when we were in the European Union. And when the new import checks come in for uh, imports coming via the EU, less food will come in from Europe and you have to wonder where the food is going to come from. And all the Conservative MPs seem to care about is cutting taxes. Well, if you cut taxes, then... Who is going to pay for the infrastructure costs and the farm support that is needed for our food? And where is the food plan? What trying to do and what the Labour Party is trying to do. There isn't a Tory in the country who doesn't want to bring taxes down. For Labour, they will happily push them further up. So that's going to be one of the big dividing lines between now and the next election. We are going to be pushing to get the tax burden down. I would love to see us get rid of national insurance in the next year or two if we get the chance after the next election. We should abolish that tax entirely and then start bringing tax down aggressively for people and cutting spending of the state because productivity in the private private sector is going up and creating jobs and wealth. Productivity in the, in, the, in, in the government sector, sadly, is coming down. And there's lots that we should be doing to actually improve the situation there. But that's a clear dividing line between us wanting to bring taxes down and the Labour Party, who continue to push taxes up and that their highest burden since World War II. Yeah, because of the Conservatives in government for 14 years. That's why. It's nothing to do with Labour. And what uh, you've just talked no, no, about... No, 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 sorry. Sorry, it's Victoria... So it, it's because of the 450 billion or so that we have spent in COVID and the cost of living crisis I understand sparked that. partly by COVID I understand and partly that. by the Ukraine war.